Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be fixing a pressure washer that I bought online. Hopefully it's just a case of servicing it and that may show, uh, that may show up some issues. But if not, I'll dig deeper and we'll, one way or another we'll fix it. So let's get on with it and we'll see how it goes. So this is the little pressure washer that I've bought. Um, right now it has an issue that when it's left idling with water pressure under it, it cuts out when you repress the trigger to, to re, sort of respray. Um, it only does this, I've only had it happen twice out of all the times that I've used it, but we'll see how we get on with servicing it. Also worth noting that I did drain the fuel out of the carb at one point and there was a little chunk that came out, so it might have been that that was the problem, but we'll see how we go and let's get on with servicing it. The air filter comes out really easily, just these two screws, either the top and bottom, you pull that out, and when it was stuck, and the air filter will come out. Oh, take them out. So what I'm going to do to start with is take these two 10mm nuts off. Um, there's two threaded shafts that go right through the carb on these and into the manifold. Uh, so if I take those two nuts off, the, the the last part of the air filter body will come out and then the carb will come out being careful not to damage the spring that you might not be able to see there you go, the spring that's there uh, and the connecting arm for the centrifugal throttle uh, we'll just disconnect that, we'll take it out and we'll clean it but it's really straightforward anyway so looking at the carb you can see that it's pretty manky on the um, on the inlet side of it there. Uh, so the fuel's off, I'll disconnect this pipe, uh, the fuel pipe, and hopefully nothing comes out, but I'll put a clamp on it as well if it does. So fingers crossed nothing comes out, then the car can pretty much just slide out then once we disconnect the throttle um, linkage. I was going to show myself draining the fuel, but there's no fuel in it, so just to, just as a note of reference to the people doing something like this, this little screw here, it's normally on the bottom of most sort of small um, Honda engines or Ponder engines like this one. Uh, you can just drain the fuel straight out of the carb and into something. I was just going to use the lid off of a spray can, but you can just drain it into something rather than it going everywhere. Because it's got this plastic shield over all the sort of throttle linkage here, this is part of the throttle here as well, um, I can't actually get the carb out. I could try and take these, um, the, the shaft out, the threaded shaft there, but it's not worth it. So I'm just going to unscrew the screw there and then take that off of there and it should have just come out then. Oh, we've got a free nail. Hopefully you didn't charge me for that. going to be hard to see but on the end of the linkage there's a little a very slight bend to it just to keep it in place so if I push this up it should there you go just pop out of place it very slightly bent that clip but it'll be okay I'll straighten that out now the carb will come out Ta -da! just like that there we have it First things first with any carb rebuild, I will normally just blow them off, try and get all the crap off the top, use a bit of brake cleaner as well if need be, just to get the oil and oil and rubbish off the top there. And then I'll take the float ball off using this using a 10mm spanner on the bottom here. Um, or it's 10mm on these. Some of most small engines have got sort of a 10mm bolt on the bottom. Some bigger engines have um, screws and stuff like that, so like dirt bikes and things like that will have generally four screws, four Phillips screws to take them off, but 10 mil bolt on the bottom that will come out, but I'll just go and clean it and I'll take that off. Brake cleaner alone has made the outside of the car look like new, um, but one thing just to bear in mind before you take it off, just keep note of where the drain plug, the drain hole will be. Um, on this side, well it's the opposite side to where the it's the opposite side to where the fuel inlet is, so just keep in, bear in mind that when you're going to take these off. I've already undone it, so it just pops off like that, nice and easy. You can see it's pretty clean now. There's a couple of little bits of dirt in there, but it's pretty clean now after I drained it before. There was some dirt in the bowl when I drained it before, so I'll just take... So now, this is the float. 
Um, so as it's filling up with water, um, fuel, a bit like your toilet, as it's filling up with fuel, it lifts up and it locks itself off. Uh, the adjustment in a float, which a lot of people don't know, is this little tab here. You literally just bend that tab maybe down or up depending on if it's got too much fuel you'd bend it sorry if it's over fueling and coming out of the top of the carb you'd bend that down which would push it into the little needle valve there uh, and that would lock the fuel off sooner rather than later so just something to bear in mind but to take them out there's this little there's this little um pin just here just comes out like that and then the, the bowl will lift out and the bowl has the needle valve on the bottom of it there um, and then that's where the needle valve goes into in here there's a jet in there normally one jet sometimes a couple of jets in there this one I noticed there's actual jet on top as well this looks like the main jet that's actually on top here so um, I might be wrong though but I've never seen one like that where it's um, directly on top of it but We'll take them out. We'll take this one out inside first. Visually inspecting the pilot jet, I can see that it's clear, but there is a very slight blockage in it, only very, very slightly, so I'll clean that out in a minute. I'll also clean this dried up fuel off of here before it all goes back together. Uh, and now I'm going to take this main jet out. The way I'm going to do that, because the, um, the throttle stops in the way there, or it might be the tick over, depends which way around it is, but um, I'll wind that all the way in, count the turns in and then wind it all the way out and I'll just make note of it so I can do the same in reverse. So wind it all the way in and wind it back out to the amount of turns that I've just counted. So this is quite an unusual main jet. Um, I've never seen this before but the hole through the middle there is not a through hole which is quite unusual. Uh, I've also never seen one externally um, or not that I can remember. Um, or not on a modern carb like this um, but yeah there's not a through hole there and there's just there's four ports on the side there and one down the middle there for it to all work through that um, which is strange but I mean it clearly works the, this actually starts and runs quite well so I've cleaned it, I've cleaned it up now uh, I've blown it through I've just got to finish off cleaning the other parts and I'll put it back together because of all the dirt and oil in here, I'm going to take off this butterfly valve. So the way you do that is just literally, well for me, I've just closed this one. This is the um, the choke. Uh, I've just closed it. And using a Phillips, not a posi, because it's a Phillips screw. And that's how you round out screws. Um, so we'll just undo these two screws. Right, now if I turn the shaft, sometimes it won't work like that, but um, it just allows me to get to the butterfly valve itself, the plate, and then we can just now slide this up, just like that. And so I'll clean out all that gunk and rubbish in the, inside the carb there, uh, and I'll clean the shaft up and I'll show you how I put it back together. So it's all cleaned out now. First things first, I'll put the, uh, the choke butterfly valve back in. There's a little teeny spring on this one, so it just locates on this spring. So I just need to fold that back, put it in there. So that would be closed right now. You can see the flat face of the valve there. It's something I always do before I tighten these screws all the way down is I will close it and I'll just make sure it's seated all the way around. As I say, it's more important for the throttle ones um, to make sure they have a, a full seat on them. You can see in the edge there as I close that. If you tighten it before you allow it to close properly, so I'm holding it closed there, and then I'll just nip these screws up, and they'll locate themselves for the whole them, so it's central. So you can see there it's located itself. Um, so I'll just nip them up. We'll put the main jet back in. Now we'll put the throttle stop back on. And it was two and a quarter turns. So we'll just put the float back in, uh, being careful to not to damage the needle as you're putting it in, just carefully locate it, wiggle it in, 
And then we'll put this round bar back in through the hole here. Oh, because I'm doing this cack handed, the needle fell out. So locate it. That's it, it's in there. We'll put the round bar back in. Now some carbs you have to locate that this round bar perfectly in the middle for the float bowl to go back on but for this one because it's just a round float bowl it can't go in anyway because it can't fall out either way um, so we, if you remember we had it opposite to the fuel inlet nine, uh, 180 degree opposite to that Oops. so that's that, that's the carb done so we'll put this to the side now because we're done with the carb I'll just check I've done that up, done the fuel drain up. Yeah, it only wants nipping as well because otherwise you can't get it back undone again. So that's done, now we've got to try and get this spark plug out. Someone in their infinite wisdom thought it would be a fantastic idea to do the rocker cover like that on this engine. So the only tool you could actually get in there is is basically just a pressed tool, it's a bit of, it's a bit of like pipe um, that has got the the sockets, the socket head sort of stamped into the end of it. Nothing else fits in that so I'll have to take the rocker cover off but it's not a bad thing so I can try and check the valve clearances while I'm at it as well. So I imagine this is the original plug. It's a little bit crusty but overall it's not too bad. Um, this is the new NGK variant that I've got um, BP whatever it is, 6HS um, yeah, it looks alright. I've done a visual inspection just to make sure it's the same same looking plug. Obviously sometimes you might get them where they're a little bit longer on the tip there uh, and they could smack the piston if you're not careful so you do have to be a bit cautious of that but yeah, it looks the same so I'm just going to do the gap and then I'll fit it into the fit it into the engine. So I've put the rocker cover back on, spark plug back in. I just had a rough visual inspection of the valve clearances and I couldn't, I mean it wasn't tapping or making any tapping noises when I had it running before but I'll run it this time and I'll check it just to see if it's if it does it anymore, see if, there's, see if there was any dirt or anything in the carb that I've cleared out here. If I can't get it to do it again then happy days we've, we've sort of, this service alone has fixed it but if not I'll come back and I'll see, or well, I'm still going to look for but I'll see if I can adjust the valve clearances um, but to find anything online about this engine because all it says is 2.6 horsepower is difficult. I can't even find another engine like it online so finding valve clearances is nigh and impossible but I'll put the car back on now exactly the same as before and we'll run it up and we'll see if it see if it starts or see if it runs okay it will start but see if it runs okay I've offered the throttle linkage back up again I just had to put, sort of put a bit of pressure on it lifting I lifted slightly in the middle and just put some pressure at the tip of it just to pop it back in then I straightened the spring out as well there put the fuel feed on and the clip on now all I've got to do is offer up the air filter housing so there's a bit of dirt in that offer that up Oops, it's popped out that little thing. Let me do this off camera. So it's all blown out. This sh this shield goes in the bottom here first. Then the air filter goes in. Uh, looking at it, it's that way, like so. It's pretty clean. There's a couple of little bits of dirt, but nothing to worth worrying about. I'm just going to blow out the cover and then I'll put the cover back on from this side and the two screws back in. I'll do that off camera because it's quite fiddly. Right, let's get this started.
that seems okay. Well, obviously, as you can see, it starts fine, it runs fine. When you pull the trigger, it wasn't cutting out, which is what it was doing before, so hopefully that's fixed, and it might have just been that bit of dirt in the carb. So, um, yeah, it's not too bad for £55, is it, really? Um, I'll use it, and I'll see if there's any problems with it. If there is, then I'll, I'll rectify them, but I don't think there will be, so hopefully this is, uh, hopefully this is it. So I'm glad we fixed the pressure washer. Um, if you liked the video, hit that like button and maybe subscribe. Um, but until the next time, thanks for watching.